Hello everyone, hope you're having a nice conference. I'm Lenny Renaud, a PhD student at TIRCAM, and I'm here to present our paper called Differentiable Piano Model for MIDI to Audio Performance Synthesis under the supervision of Remy Mignot and Axel Wobble in the Analysis and Synthesis team at TIRCAM. The task we are dealing with is instrument sound synthesis. So given the controls provided by the musician, we try to emulate the sound uh, that will be produced by the musical instrument. Uh, using one of many different synthesis algorithms. I'm sure many of you know different kinds of uh, uh, ways for dealing with instrument synthesis, so I'll quickly go over them. Uh, sampling based uh, synthesizers just play individual not recordings upon MIDI triggers. Synthesizers or signal based methods in general uh, will mostly find the controls for a parametri parametrized model by analysis and synthesis methods, uh, which give the user a very explicit control of all the sound synth synthesis. Uh, physical model risk system try to write down all the equations and solve them in order to recreate all the different physical effects uh, that happens in the instrument. And when done right, it can sound very, very good, but it requires very deep understanding and modeling of the instruments. And more recently, uh, neural network-based uh, models have achieved also a good quality of sound, but at the cost of very little control over the synthesis process and other than the conditional inputs that we provided. So a recent intermediate that was proposed uh, between signal-based and neural-based synthesis is the DSP. So thanks to Gail's talk yesterday, I can go a bit quicker on this slide now. Uh, the DSP stands for Differentiable Digital Sound uh, Signal Processing and they've implemented a synthesizer in a differentiable way which makes them controllable by neural networks and that way we can have both the interpretability of the synthesizers and the expressivity of deep neural networks. Uh, the differentiable components introduce strong priors on the sound structures which alleviate the need for a huge amount of training data. And based on their results, and there have been quite a few improvements made to the framework in order to handle MIDI, have differentiable wave shapers, wave shapers, wave tables, IR filters, and monophonic mixtures. But up to till this point, they've only been uh, applied for monophonic sound synthesis, um, which is a bit of a shame because we can see in this room that, for example, piano is very popular. Um, I mean, where's the flute? <laughs> uh, so that's what we try to do. Uh, we try to extend uh, the DDSP for handling polyphonic uh, sounds. So from the control that the pianist uh, can have over instruments, Instruments such as the plain notes, the pillar action, and the type of piano they can choose. Uh, we will synthesize the sound like in the original DDSP paper, paper uh, by uh, having an additive synthesizer that combines harmonics, uh, sinusoids, and a subtractive synthesizer that will uh, filter noise. And everything is filtered by a learned impulse response for the reverb. And the synths are all controlled by a deep neural networks that we have chosen certain architecture in order to uh, incorporate high level modeling knowledge of the instruments. Uh, the model is trained in an end-to-end uh, superficial fashion by trying to reproduce the target sound. Um, so as it is illustrated here, it can be a quite a bit daunting. So I will try to explain it by building uh, from a simpler stripped down version. Uh, for the case of, uh, if we, if we uh, revert back to the simple task of monophonic MIDI to audio synthesis, uh, we can have a small model that we provide as input the active pitch and alt send velocity. So it's a conditioning vector that is composed of the pitch component saying which note it should be played at which time step. And the velocity components only handles for the uh, force at which the key was pressed only at onset time. Uh, add to that the pedal signals uh, from the pianist. And uh, there's, there's um, recurrent neural networks that will try to predict uh, the controls for uh, the differentiable synthesizers, uh, which are responsible for different parts of the piano sound. So the additive synthesizer will be responsible for everything related to the string vibration, vibration. whereas the subtractive synthesizer uh, will try to reproduce all the residual noise, such as the the key being pressed down to, to, uh, to the end of the piano. And finally, this in, uh, impulse response is responsible for the reverb. Uh, if we try to look at the way that the piano is uh, working, there's the damping mechanism, 
uh, that when a note is pressed up, this stamping mechanism will uh, press down in order to attenuate the vibration, but this, um, this system is not instantaneous, so the steel sting vibrates after the note is released. So taking inspiration from the release parameter, we simply extend the active pitch conditioning in order to let the additive synthesizer to uh, generate uh, sound even after the note is pressed up. Another particularity of the piano sound is the inharmon partial inharmonicity. So piano strings are known to be very stiff, which, which leads, leads to the which leads to the uh, partials not being pure harmonics of the fundamental frequency. And this means this uh, very nice paper from François Rigaud and Bertrand David uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, presented at DAFIX, uh, where they simply plot uh, the co inharmonicity coefficients over the piano textura, and they found that the curves can be approximated, oh, man, sorry, <laughs> so busy. Uh, that the curves can be approximated by the sum of two affin affine functions in the exponential scale. Uh, so we just add this model uh, to, our, uh, to our full model uh, with the parameters that were initialized, with parameters initialized from the parameters they estimated in their papers in order to produce um, a side uh, in harmonic coefficient to displace the harmonics in the additive synthesis. Another particularity of the piano sound are the tripled and doubled strings uh, in order to even out the loudness of the piano notes across the whole tessitura. Uh, some notes are duplicated even, or even tripled. And since those uh, substrings can be slightly detuned from one to another, uh, this can lead to uh, amplitude modulation towards certain partials. So to reproduce this effect, we simply generate several string signals for the same notes and try to compute a detuning factor for each substring. Now, if we try to extend everything to the polyphonic case, uh, we uh, add a polyphony axis to the conditioning vector, uh, which uh, around each cha monophonic channel, we try to provide the monophonic information as presented before. And all the previous layers that was presented before operates along each monophonic channel. So we learned the monophonic string uh, model and it will be applied on all the nodes. But still, in order to have a global coherence, uh, we add a mod module to, to compute a context vector that is shared by all the monophonic uh, channels and maybe to reproduce uh, interactions between the nodes in, such as sympathetic resonances. Uh, in order to be comparable with previous neural-based approaches, uh, we have to use the same training data, and they, in their training data, they have several piano models, so we have to make our model compatible with modeling several piano models at the same time. Uh, each uh, piano model has different recording environments, and piano model has different in harmonic coefficients and uh, detuning factors, so we add uh, an encoder uh, to produce uh, an, a piano embedding and instrument-specific modifiers, as well as a dictionary of different impulse response corresponding to each recording environment. Um, speaking of training, uh, the model has been trained with the Maestro dataset, uh, which consists of uh, almost 200 hours of professional piano performances that were recorded on this Yamaha disc clavier, so which means that we have both the MIDI data and the audio recordings perfectly aligned. And this data set, they had 10 different uh, piano recordings uh, environments. Uh, the model is trained using the classic multi-scale spectral loss that was presented by Richard, uh, Gail Richard yesterday, plus some regular, regularization terms. And we propose a two-phase training uh, because the inharmonicity model and the detuning model are already, ha are already initialized with parameters that are close to their optimal values, but not the other uh, modules of the network graph. So we first freeze uh, the explicit modules to f let the other uh, layers uh, converge to something that's more realistic. And then afterward, we reverse the trainability to f maybe try to fine tune the uh, inharmonicity and detuning factors. Uh, we've compared our approach with different uh, synthesis uh, algorithms as presented before. So we use fluid synth for the concatenative uh, baseline, 
PNTX7 by Mildart for the physical modeling system uh, approach, and uh, text-to-speech inspired uh, pure neural approach uh, to the task, which is just a Tachotron 2 uh, predicting mass spectrogram This reverted back in audio with the neural source filter. And we also try different ablated variants of our model to look at the different relevance of the different proposed modules. Uh, first, like what if we uh, replace the explicit inharmonicity model by a deep inharmonicity mo model, which is just a black box, uh, deep neural network fashion. Uh, how about if we uh, don't let the other nodes uh, be informed about each other? Uh, is it possible to train it with less data? So is it possible for single piano modeling, tra uh, single piano modeling? And also, if we do not, what happens if we do not apply the fine-tuned parameters from the second training phase? OK, that's nice and all, but how does it sound? You may be thinking about since the beginning. Uh, here's a few examples. Uh, this is the synthesis uh, by the default configuration. OK, that's good. And in comparison with the ground truth. make your own opinion about the quality. That's at least what we ask a bunch of different people. So we've gathered a mini opinion score by uh, 52 participants with pianists and audio professionals. And that's the plot uh, given from uh, that were obtained. Uh, from the results, we can deduce that our per approach outperforms the pure neuro-based strategy. Uh, but it's still lower than the physical base model. Uh, in fact, the physical model is even better rated than the ground truth, <laughs> which is a result that was also found in Cooper's work. Um, compared to the sampling-based approach for pianists, we are quite on par uh, in terms of quality, but lower for non-piano players, which is an interesting result. We have to look in detail why. As for the ablated variants, the sole uh, amelioration that was done is about the explicit inharmonicity model that strictly outperforms uh, when in comparison to the one where we replaced the model by a deep neural network black box. Uh, compared to the reduced context and the fine tuning of the training parameters, it is not, there is no significant improvements made. And the, piano, and the model can be trained for single piano modeling, which is nice, uh, which consists only, only two hours of data. Uh, bonus, bonus slide. Uh, funny thing that can be done with the DSP is to listen at the different components of the different synthesizers. So if we we'll take a listen to the full synthesis, we can hear this. We can only listen to the harmonic part, or not. <laughs> yeah, okay. or, or only at the noise part. I like this example. <laughs> Um, so in conclusion, uh, I've presented, we've presented a fully differentiable piano synthesizer with, with a deep neural network architecture that's motivated by high level modeling knowledge about the instruments, which makes it very interpretable. And it can be uh, trained for signal piano modeling, even with a way significantly less parameters than the pure neural based approach. Uh, I think our model has only half a million parameters, where the Cooper models have 30 million, if I recall correctly. Uh, in terms of quality, it was preferred over the pure neural-based approach, uh, but it still does not outperform the physical modeling and the sampling-based methods, so there's still room for improvements. And the proposed explicit uh, module, the proposed fine-tuning of the explicit module is not quite there yet, so we have to have also improve uh, throughout this case. Uh, the code is model and the model weights are released on the, it's publicly available in GitHub. I was not very inspired that day, GSPPN. 
<laughs> and in terms of future works, I think there's a lot of to be done. Uh, it was, a, I think, it's a nice step towards the hybrid, hybrid, uh, deep, uh, hybrid generation and neural in, and physically informed uh, neural approaches. Um, but for now, we, I think it would be quite interesting to conduct deeper perceptive evaluations to try to exactly pinpoint what's wrong in the model and try to correct the model afterwards uh, based on those results. Uh, can further explore uh, the, both the physical modeling literature and the deep learning literature and try to combine the best of both worlds and to make, it, uh, make them work all together jointly. And maybe for, as a first step, try to find better strategy for fine tuning the, the tuner in, in the city models. And we can maybe also a bit more fancy uh, task, uh, try to use the model since it's fully differentiable into other symbolic and uh, audio related tasks, uh, such as uh, using the speaker embeddings uh, literature for text to speech, uh, try to use it for source separation, like in the clients and truth uh, models that was presented yesterday. And also can be used for self supervised uh, polyphonic transition taking polyphonic transcription taking inspiration from the DSP inverse. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Lenny? We have, yeah. Oh, it's coming from the other side, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Lenny. Um, my question is about the pedals. Um, yeah. Do you have a model for the pedals, or do you include the data with the um, uh, sound with pedals in your um, training, and uh, so the network take, uh, takes care of it? Um, you mean if it was included and if it was taken into account? Yes. Um, it was provided as a side uh, information on top of the of the. Um, of the notes, and we let the neural networks try to figure out the correspondence between uh, the output audio and the input uh, pedal signals. So, for example, in some samples, we can hear that uh, when the pedal is pressed down, which opens up and produces a different noise at this moment. Okay, thank you. But it's not always the case, but it's, it's, that's the goal that we're trying to do. Uh, hi, I'm Sasha from Music Tribe. Uh, two very, very quick questions. Uh, one, were um, your listeners able to verbalize the difference between the various synthesizers? Why is it that the, the, that the, the, the um, uh, physical synthesis was preferred to everything else? Do you know? Uh, I think because the physical modeling system is, um, is the result of several years of research, a full PhD thesis, and a full Yeah, no, no, but from the standpoint of the listeners, were they able to say uh, this one sounds more precise or this one is warmer or whatever kind of qualifiers, like in terms of, were they able to say why they preferred one over the other? Uh, we don't let them the uh, liberty, liberties to okay. further, um, further, uh, Inform their 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 ratings, yeah, but no, that's sorry. that's part yeah. of what I was thinking about uh, conducting deeper perceptive evaluations to pinpoint the like, idea. Yeah, is it because of the artifacts, or is it because just the piano sounds bad? And yeah, yeah, this kind of thing because that could inform the you know further research. Yeah, and so error analysis essentially is good. And uh, uh, it was uh, was it a mean opinion scale like a discrete one, like a one to five? Your evaluation at the end, I just missed if it was a. Uh, it's one to five. Uh, Yes, okay. Ratings. All right. Very, very uh, nice. Okay, so there, there is an article from Simon King, I will send you that, which is about, you, you can't actually make an average of uh, opinion scores. It could be that uh, within the, the intervals of confidence of your, of your uh, uh, mean opinion scores, that your system is not actually that different from everything else. But we can talk about that during the break. Sorry. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So first of all, like really cool work. Um, so when you built in the whole signal processing uh, structure into your model, and like I suppose you were learning parameters for the uh, signal processing, just like DDSP people were. So uh, like how is it different from the physical model um, in spirit? Like there, people set the parameters using their physical knowledge, or maybe through heuristics, uh, and you are learning it from data. Um, 
so first of all like is that true and if it is then like why do you think um, like we are not able to learn the parameters as well as uh, the full physical model uh, is it because the data is not enough there, there isn't uh, enough variability in the data or uh, it's something deeper um, I think it's an amount of data the maestro data set is more than enough uh, I mean he, he can even converge to uh, when trained with only two hours of data I think we can try even even less um, maybe it's maybe a problem of correct data that you should learn because this is full performances so there's lots of stuff going at the same time it may be more efficient to first of all in model individual nodes and then after what pass on to the full performances and even even though uh, it, I think uh, perceptually we can there should be a difference if the, there's a detuning or not and if the perceptive test shows that it doesn't matter for now that means that the model still has improvements up be, to be made before reaching the point where uh, bad in homogeneity or bad detuning matters for the for the perceptual, the perceptual test. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so. Thank you.